Welcome back to DXB Today. Tonight we are talking impact investments and who better to talk to than somebody who actually does do impact investing. Please join me in welcoming to the show a sustainability investor. It's Matteo Boffa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. So when we say you're an impact investor, especially when it comes to sustainability, are we talking in companies, in people, in softwares? What is it that you focus on or all of the above? So I specialize in investing in people, so uh, mostly in startups, so very early stage. Uh, usually people mention uh, angel investor, I enter a bit early in the friends, family and fool round. So people that believe more in the person than the idea sometimes. Fair enough. And how has that worked out for you when it comes to those types of investments? So far good. I have to say I have my secret sauce, which is my wife, which is the final decision maker in any uh, investment decision. Um, but so far I did some good investment, especially uh, in the UAE, uh, investing in young students from different universities. Incredible. Matteo, tell me, have you kind of, do you have a criteria in place or a process in place for actually knowing that these are the people that you want to invest in? So as I mentioned, for me, the first and most important part is the human behind mm -hmm. uh, the idea. I invested in the past in uh, great product, great services, in the right place, in the right moment. Uh, and the team and the startup failed because of the human factor. So this is for me is the, the most important part. Mm -hmm. I think one of the challenges people face, particularly uh, when we look at investment, when it's investment funds, how do we identify that they're really doing the real thing of investing something really impactful? How do we identify that? How do you identify that? So in my personal opinion is on three level of sustainability. If your startup, your idea, your company has a positive impact in society, in people, that's the first pillar. Uh, the second one is the environment. So again, if you avoid um, pollution to uh, being created or to end up in landfill, for example, is the second pillar. And the third pillar of sustainability is, of course, uh, the financial uh, aspect. So if you can touch the three uh, uh, pillar of uh, sustainability, which is social, environmental and financial, you can have something uh, extremely successful. I think there's often a misconception if you want to invest in something that you have to have a lot of money to be able to do that. Would you say that that is true? And if not, how would you say that people can get involved themselves? So I don't know if you can see it, but my pockets are very small. Uh, I don't have a, a lot of money, unfortunately, uh, but uh, I invest very uh, small amount that can be from 10,000 to uh, $50,000 uh, in a very early stage idea. Mm -hmm. And you don't need uh, much money. You have people that invest in, in cryptocurrency and put way more and uh, look at screen every day for me is giving um, literally a chance to uh, a young person, a young student with a good idea to really try and, and make it. And this as well is sustainability in giving a chance to somebody. Matteo, I want to talk about mindset and I, I want to bring you in this as well, Mehed, because I feel like there is a psychological correlation between wanting to invest, which is basically putting in money to get money back, mm -hmm. and not caring too much about sustainable things, about social things. Is there a benefit to people who literally don't care about the environment? Is there still a benefit for them in terms of making money and appealing to those kinds of instincts? Yes, of course. Um, investing in uh, impactful startup maybe can be a bit longer in terms of return of investment, uh, but of course it can be extremely uh, interesting. From my personal side, entering early, uh, give me the chance to get or acquire a good uh, chunk of shares. And after I have other people which have more philanthropic approach uh, and they uh, just want to uh, make an investment which is different to leave the money in the bank. Um, not caring about the environment is something that uh, unfortunately uh, it's still there uh, for certain investors. Uh, hopefully there are more people in the future that will put money where there is an impact. Definitely. So Matteo, I asked you earlier if you have to have a lot of money to be able to invest. <laughs> but I'm, so to follow up with that question, I just wanted to know what is the timeline that you can expect to see a return once you have made an investment? So for me, uh, the good part is get, that can be um, quite early because mm -hmm. entering early means getting a lot of shares that you can flip or sell in the secondary market to other bigger investors. So I usually I'm the crazy guy that put the money on the table and a little bit pray and I have people that says, okay, you jump in the cage with the tigers. If you uh, crawl out, uh, we will be there to put more money at a higher valuation. So for me, it can be early stage return of investment and keeping some shares for the future. Okay. Uh, Matteo, I have to ask you, because I'm very nosy like that, are there any investments that you have made that have 
proven to be fruitful? Can you share those projects or company or concepts with us? Yeah, I have very, uh, two very good examples. Uh, one is Tele, uh, which is coming from a mind of uh, uh, at that time, 19 years old student from Amity University uh, that created the first 100% vegan uh, shoes made from wow. plastic bags and plastic bottle. Mm. Uh, was doing a, a competition uh, startup. He came out with not a pair of shoes, but one single left shoes prototype uh, of a shoe made of plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the most ugliest shoe I ever saw <laughs> in my life. Uh, he won the competition. Uh, the day after we had a coffee, I put $10,000 on the table and now the company is uh, valued more than $5 million. So that's wow. uh, eventually is a good, um, it's a, it's a good story. Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, Zofer, which is one of the uh, fast growing startup in the, in the region. And um, I enter when they only had two drivers and uh, now uh, we have uh, over 500. So this is another good story. And the social impact is, is taking home people that are not willing to drive. Mm -hmm. I love that. I use it for a lot, actually. Matteo, uh, if I may, if I think it's good to give perspective to the audience and everybody. What is the um, successful rate of your investment so far have been? So my personal rate is around 10%. Uh, if we look at uh, my wife rate, we are very close to the 100%. No. Uh, she's a fantastic teacher. Uh, she's not very into the business world, uh, but she has this empathy and she can really recognize the value of people. So uh, she does the uh, gladiator style decision. Uh, yes, no, once uh, we met the, the founders and uh, she, she's, uh, she's my secret sauce. So it seems like high risk, but high reward in the end. Um, thank you, Matteo. Thank you so much for joining us thank on DXV so today. It's over to Amy, though, for DXV in 60. It is indeed. Maher, we're going to put you in the hot seat right now. Sure. Of mm -hmm. course, you've given us some incredible insight when it comes to impact investment, but we want to get to know you a little bit better. So quick fire questions. Can I have 60 seconds on the clock? And let's go. If you weren't working in investments, what would you be doing? Teaching. Fantastic. Your motto in life and in work? Help human beings. Always. A superpower that you wish you had? Flying. I'd love to fly too. Your first ever job? Uh, accidental co-founder of an IT company. Okay. The last app that you used on your mobile phone? Instagram. It's a good one. A podcast recommendation? Keep on helping people. Okay. A future trend that you see coming up in the world of investments and funding? It'll be more in technology, which is quantum computing applications. Okay, sounds like something I know a lot about. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, do sorry, what? If you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? My father. Oh, lovely. Your go-to place in Dubai? Home. <laughs> Always. And why Dubai? It's a land of opportunities. It definitely is. It most definitely is. Thank you so much for giving us a little insight into you as a person. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Maher, it's been amazing having you as our guest co-host. I'm sure we'll see you again. Thank you so much for being on DXB today. Pleasure. Thank you very much. So um, kind of you. Matteo, it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you as well. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for the invite. All right. But for right now, there is still more left to the show. We're going to have our performance, of course. The Gems Trio are going to be taking the stage very, very soon. So you definitely don't want to go anywhere now. We'll see you back here.